Hello friends and welcome back. In this lecture we will talk about constructors and here is our outline. We will talk in general about constructors, we will talk about the default constructor and finally we will talk about overloading constructors. Let's get started. As you know, a constructor is a method that is used to instantiate and initialize objects. Now let's talk about constructors in more details. First of all, a constructor must have the same name as the class. For example, the constructor of the string class is called string, and the constructor of the point class is called point. Also, the constructor of the circle class that we created is called circle, okay? Moreover, constructors don't have a return type. Also, constructors are invoked or called using the new operator. And as we said before, we should use constructors to initialize objects. So we use constructors to give initial values to the attributes of our object. Finally, a default constructor is a zero argument constructor with an empty body. So it is a constructor that doesn't take any parameters and doesn't do anything. We simply use it to create an object from the class. Now let's consider the same class as before, which represents a circle. It has the following attributes and the following methods. Now we want to add this constructor. It is called circle because the name of the class is circle. This constructor is going to take two parameters. The first parameter is a point and we are going to call it initial center. And the second parameter is a double and we will call it initial radius. So now when we create circle objects, we can give the constructor two arguments, a point and a double. And we will initialize the values of our attributes with these values that are passed over here. So our center attribute will be equal to the initial center and our radius attribute will be equal to the initial radius. So let's create this constructor. First of all, I'm in the circle class and we have these two attributes. And now we have a method that is called circle and it doesn't have a return type. This method takes a point initial center and a double initial radius. And inside this method, we are assigning the center attribute to be equal to the initial center and the radius to be equal to the initial radius. So this is our constructor and we are using it to initialize the values of the attributes, as you can see. So now let's use this constructor to create circle objects. Have a look at this code. Inside the main method, I'm creating a circle C1, which is equal to a new circle. And over here, I'm passing two arguments. So I'm calling the constructor that is called circle and takes two arguments. The first argument is a point with x equal 1 and y equal 2. And the second argument is an integer. Of course, this value will be casted to a double because the second argument is a double. Okay. So now I'm printing the center of the circle C1 and the radius, and this will be the output. So as you can see, we use constructors to initialize the attributes of our object. In other words, we use it to initialize our object. Now let's try to use the default constructor. Over here, I'm creating a circle C1, which is equal to a new circle. Have a look over here, we have an error. The error says expected two arguments, but found zero. So our circle class doesn't have a default constructor anymore. It only has the constructor that takes two arguments. So have a look over here. When no constructors are created, a default constructor is created automatically by Java. But when we create a constructor, the default constructor is not created. In other words, if you want a zero argument constructor, you have to create it. So have a look over here. Now we are creating two constructors. So we are overloading the constructor. The first constructor doesn't take any parameters and it does nothing. It has an empty body. And the second constructor is the same as before. So now we have two ways to create circle objects. The first one is using this constructor. And in this case, the value of the center and the radius will be default values. The center will be null and the radius will be zero. And the second way is using this constructor. And in this case, the values of the center and the radius will be given by the user. Now let's modify this constructor over here. Let's suppose that when we use this constructor, we want to give default values for the center and the radius other than null and zero. So have a look over here. Now, inside this constructor, we are assigning the center to be equal to a new point with x equals 0 and y equals 0. Also, we are assigning the radius to be equal to 1. So now, if you use this constructor to create a circle object, the center will be equal to this point and the radius will be equal to 1. So if the user doesn't want to give a value for the center and the radius, he can use this constructor and you will give default values as you can see. So now let's create circle objects using both of these constructors. Have a look over here. In our main method, I'm going to create a circle C1 using this constructor. After that, I'm printing the center and the radius, and this is the output. As you can see, the center is a point with x equals 0 and y equals 0, and the radius is equal to 1.0. So Java automatically knows what constructor to use based on the number of parameters. 
Now let's use the other constructor. We are creating a circle C2 and we are passing values as arguments. After that, I'm printing the center and the radius and this will be the output. Now in this case, we only have two constructors. And of course, you can create as many constructors as you want. We are simply overloading a method which is the constructor, okay? Now I want to show you another example of using two constructors. Have a look over here. I'm creating a point P1 using this constructor. It doesn't take any parameters. And after that, I'm printing P1. As you will see over here, x will be equal to 0 and y will be equal to 0. So inside the point class, there is a constructor that doesn't take any parameters. And we are able to use this constructor over here. Also, we have another constructor. This constructor takes the value of x and the value of y. So over here, I'm creating a point P2 and after that, I'm printing P2 and this will be the output. So this is similar to what we have done with the circle class, okay? So this is it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.